Hi everyone, it's Lorna. Um, I'm here to do a September update. Um, it's been about five or six weeks since I last saw you. Um, it's been a pretty busy month, but I got quite a few, quite a bit of stitching done. Um, I've got a little bit of a haul. I've got some whips to show you. I've got a new start um, and a few other things to talk about. So we'll get started. Um, first of all, my whips. Um, I'm doing something a bit different with this video. I'm going to try and edit it a little bit. So hopefully you'll see what this one looked like last time I posted. And this is what Once Upon a Time looks like now. So I've done more on the three little pigs up here and more of the border, which hopefully you'll see um, the last time I posted that. Um, I'm using the, um, this was one of the new ones I bought last uh, last time I showed you. This is um, Bridal Shop, I think. Is that what it is? Yes, Bridal Shop um, from Button, from Mill Hill Buttons and Beads. Sorry. And um, I've done a little bit on that. It's really I'm using this one as a travel piece, so it's just in my wallet, in my purse when I when I go out. And that's what it looks like now. So I haven't done much on that one. And I'll insert a picture of what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. Um, this is my Mediterranean one, the one with no name. Um, I said last time I was going to use this for my holiday piece, but it just called to me for some reason, so I did a bit of work on it. Not much, but that's that one. And and this is what it looks like now. So I haven't done much on it. Um, I'm going to run into problems with this one if I want to frame it because there's there's about half an inch on the top and half an inch on the bottom um, of salvage. There's plenty of room on the sides, but top and bottom is really close. So that's the one issue I have with this kit. There's not enough fabric, but I don't know that I will frame it, so I think it'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I'll keep working on that one or leave it as a holiday piece, like I said before. But it just, I just felt like working on it this time, this month. Um, and then a while ago, I showed you Lady of the Mist by Mirabilia, um, and I put it away while I was working on my mermaid. But now that the mermaid's finished, I decided to pick it up again. Um, here's what it looked like last time. And this is what it looks like now. This, um, obviously, that's only the bottom half that you're seeing. But I haven't done much. I've done a little bit here. Um, this new, this is a new frame as well. Um, I bought it from a stash on load, so it's quite cheap, um, and I like it. It's just a little bit heavy to work with, so I do need a stand with it. Um, I just don't have the room for a stand at the moment, so um, I'm not sure when I'll be getting one. I can work without one, um, and I quite like the tension it gives for the most part, so I will keep working on this. Um, I just really want to finish this one. I'm enjoying it, but I also want just want to move on now. So that's Lady of the Mist by Mary Billion. Um, now I felt like working on my stocking, which is called Faithful Friends by Haid. Um, this is what it looked like last time you saw it. And I haven't worked on it since about February, I think. But this is what it looks like now. 
and this is another one that called to me and I watched Caroline Matthew's video again thank you Caroline it was a wealth of information um, that was the video on parking to be specific um, but yeah I'm using that technique and I'm loving it it's really it's going really really well um, I'm just working in columns um, this little bit was done before and it was just the dark blues I just wanted to get that out of the way and now that that's out of the way it's going a lot more quickly um, I do have a bit more of page on the page two will be a bit more dark blue but this is what page one will be like that's the dimensions of page one it does go in a little bit because it's a stocking so it's not perfectly straight on the edge um, but that's what it looks like so far and I'm really enjoying it that's um one over one on 25 count Nagana Um, and then my story time sampler. So they've I haven't done August yet, so that's the missing part. There, that's the missing part um, for August, which was um, the Phantom of the Opera. And I'm looking forward to doing that one. It's just um, I'm still hanging on to see if Heidi will be released. I doubt it will be now. Um, but I know that if I, as soon as I stitch it, Heidi will be released. So I don't want to stitch it just yet. Um, and what, just to go back on that, um, my daughter's name's Heidi and she was born in August. So I really wanted to, if Heidi was released, I would have done the August frame as Heidi and moved around the frames a bit. Um, I doubt that's going to happen now, but I'm just leaving it blank for now. So I'll do um, the Phantom of the Opera right at the end. Um, but this was September's frame. It was Black Beauty and the one next to it is um, this month's and that's Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables and that one's really cute as well but yeah that's Big Black Beauty there and I think that was all the whips I worked on yep. and then I had a new start and this is part of a haul um, so I think it was, I'm not sure if it was the last video or the video before I answered um, Coffee Stitches tag about if if there was one chart that I wanted, to, one particular art that I, artwork that I wanted charted, it would be Juliet by um, Takaki, the artist Takaki. And I said that if that one ever came out, um, I would kit it up straight away and start it. Well, it did come out and I did kit it up and start it. So I spent a lot of time bobbinating this month because there are 130 um, colours in that one. And I only had about 80, I think. So I had to, no, I had less than that. I only had probably about 65 colours. So I needed to do quite a bit of bobbinating. Um, so I did that. It's all bobbinated. It takes up two floss boxes, which I don't have with me at the moment. but. Um, I got the fabric, I got all the floss and I started it and I'll put the I'll put what it's going to look like in here. And this is what I've done so far. And I'm doing that one one over one on 25 count as well. And as well I'm using um Caroline's tutorial on parking and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so like I said, 130 colours, so it's quite it's quite detailed. Um, it's going to be quite large. Um, I can't remember what the dimensions are. I think it's about 18 by 26. I think I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Um, if I if I find out how, I'll, I'll put the I'll put the dimensions here. Um, yeah. So that's. Juliet by Takaki, um, charted by Tilton Crafts, and it's going really well. Um, I just wanted to see whether anyone, well, I'm sure someone would know, but what do you do when you get to the bottom of the page? Do you keep parking or do you, you, do you just stitch those colours? What I've done here is looked up the next page down, um, and instead of parking the threads, I've stitched them just so that when I get down all the other columns I don't have a ton of parked threads 
here. And I'm just wondering what other people do when they get to the bottom of a, a large page like this um, when they do park. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering if that's I don't I know there's no right or wrong way, or, but if there's a better way of doing it. Um, so yeah, that's Juliet, and I'm I'm loving this one. So I think you might see a lot more of this one in the coming weeks. Oh well, in the coming years, I'd say <laughs> it's not gonna it's not gonna be done quickly. So that was part of my haul. Um, because like I said, when I saw that, I got it straight away. Um, I also got this, which I'm sure everyone's, a lot of you have seen. Um, I actually bought it from a stash on load site. My, no news agents next to me had it. So, um, I found it on a stash on load site and when I saw it, I bought it. Um, it's got a lot of Joan Elliott, Leslie T, um, and others in their Doreen Jones, a lot of artwork from them. I've never actually stitched from by anything by those artists, but I have always admired their work. So I'm looking forward to stitching some of those. Um, I think someone's already done a walkthrough, so I won't I won't do a review of it. But if you'd like me to, let me know. Um, there's just some really cute patterns in there, and I'm um, I'm actually starting on one, which I won't tell you until next month, because I think the person I'm making it for watches this video. Um, or this channel, sorry. But yeah, there's some really cute patterns in there, so that's the ultimate cross-stitch fantasy. And remember how I said I was going on a stash diet? <laughs> I remember that, but then I didn't actually follow through. Um, anyway, I, I stitched Afternoon in Paris. Um, I think it was last month I finished that one, you may recall. Um, and then... I think Caroline told me that Afternoon in London came out, so thanks Caroline. Um, so I bought it, and I'm not going to stitch that straight away, I've just got too much on my plate at the moment, but I bought the fabric. Sorry, I'm going to open a packet, so it's going to be a bit of pumpkin. Um Colour Cascade Fabrics here in Australia had a sale on. And um, I think it was 20% off. Um, so I bought the fabric for it. I decided that I'd just buy the fabric and have it ready. And that's it there. And that's called Island of Avalon Island. Yeah. And it's a 28 count Lugana opalescent. I don't know if you can see the opalescence there coming through. But yeah, there's a bit of opalescence coming through there. And this is a 13 by 18 inch piece. Um, so not sure when I'll do that one, but um, at least I have the fabric in my stash now. So, um, I've also mentioned before that I'll be starting Santa's Village next month in November, um, which I still plan to do. But... Country Cottage Needle Works is also releasing another one, which is a mystery Christmas sampler, or mystery Christmas stitch along. Um, and that one's called Gingerbread Village, and I'm planning on stitching that one. Um, here in Australia, Stitches and Spice, um, they're actually a, um, they actually produce hand dyed fabrics as well. And um, they're thinking of doing a Buttons of the Month Club with that piece so um because that piece has buttons on every month so what they'll do is um they'll release the fabric and all the specialty threads um at the beginning and then you just pay a monthly fee and get the chart every month that when it's released so i'm also thinking of doing that one um and that one will be released in november so I don't know whether I'll continue with Santa's Village or just focus on Gingerbread Village. Um, but, you know, there's no hurry. I'll always have them, so it doesn't really matter when I finish them. Um, I do have a lot on my plate at the moment. Um, I tried a rotation last month and it really only lasted about three days. I just got bored. Um, I wasn't enjoying it and I thought, you know what, this is a hobby. 
why restrict myself to something I'm not enjoying? Um, I had other pieces that called to me and I worked on those. Um, and then Juliet came out and I really wanted to start on that one. Um, so I'm just, at the moment, I'm just working on what I feel like working on. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. I know that I've got a lot of whips on the go and I won't finish all of them next year or this year. But I'm enjoying working on them and it doesn't really worry me. Um, I remember Ildi, I think, from Cross Stitch and Discuss mentioned once that um, having a kit in storage is really exactly the same as having a whip in storage. And it's true. Um, I just kind of think if I start something it's, and put it in storage, it's exactly the same as having a kitted up project in storage. It's just that you've put a stitch in there so or a couple of stitches in there. So. I've started what I feel like starting on. Um, there are others I want to start, but I, I, for some reason I just don't want to have too many. But at the same time, if I really, really want to start something, I'm, I'm going to. I'm not going to stop myself from it. Um, it's all about fun. It's a hobby. Just do what makes you happy. Um, and I know that rotations work for a lot of other people, but I've tried it, like I said, and it just doesn't work for me. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I just wanted to mention um, last month um, I mentioned that I bought the um, bead storage from Australian, from an Australian supplier and a couple of people asked me where I got that from and I'll put the link below in this video um, for anyone who was wondering. Um, also if you've left me a comment and I didn't reply straight away I'm really sorry. Um, like a lot of other people have said, YouTube has stopped sending notifications when comments are put on your videos. So I haven't, I didn't realise there were a lot of them were there. Um, and then I went to have a look and saw them there. Um, I've found now what where to find them, um, even if they're on older videos. So I will reply as soon as I see them. Um, if I haven't replied to a comment, I'm really sorry. I just haven't found it. Um, but I always try and reply to comments, so if I haven't, I'm not ignoring you. Um, it's just that I haven't seen it yet. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, the other thing is I was going to kit up um, a Hade kit. Hade, um, Heaven and Earth Designs released a statement, well, released an email saying that they wanted to um, start producing kits for any of the charts that people had. Um, and I really wanted to start getting up Cinderella on the stairs um, and I'll put a picture here. That And that was um, a rack by a lovely lady called Jenna that I received earlier in the year. And I've really been wanting to start that so I was thinking of getting it up. Um, so I wrote to Hayde and I asked them how much that would cost and the cost was it was going to work out a lot more expensive than if I'd kitted up myself. So I've decided not to. And then just as their email came through saying that they'd released that kit, um, Juliet was released. So I wanted to kit up that one and I really didn't want it. I've already got, now I've got two heads and one children craft on the go. And as you know, they're all full coverage. Um, I didn't really want another full coverage piece on the go as well. So that one's been put on the back burner again, um, but I, I still really want to stitch it, so um, it will be next in the um, full coverage plans. Um, so I think that's all I had. Um, I'm sorry this video is a bit rushed. Um, my daughter and my husband just went shopping um, and they've left me to kind of catch up with my chores and I've done a little bit of that, but it's a really hot day today. Um, here in Australia we're going into spring but it feels like it's jumped into summer. Um, <laughs> it's 36 degrees today. Um, that's Celsius. I'm not sorry, I'm really I'm really sorry, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, but it's hot, believe me. <laughs> um, that's summer weather, not spring weather. So um, I really didn't feel like doing much housework. Um, but I thought I'd do a video because I've been meaning to and just for one reason or another it hasn't happened yet. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to edit this video. This will be the first time I edit a video so I hope it works. Um, otherwise it's going to look really silly. But hopefully it'll work. Um, 
and I think that's all I had. I hope everyone's had a really good month and I hope you have a good October. Um, thank you for all your subscriptions, comments and likes and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next month. Take care. Bye.